hot off the stage from uh, your Ken Bruce live inserts, which were sounding amazing. Welcome to the show, Van. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Claire. It's a really busy day, but you're already sounding like an angel. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Now, I know that you um, you listen to the show on occasion, so you've heard the kind of stuff that we play. Mm-hmm. And when I met you for the first time, I was ever so surprised, I don't know why, that you uh, knew such a lot about our kind of music and you've chosen some well, tracks. I, I, well, I don't know why, why you were surprised. I know, I shouldn't have been, but I was, no. pleasantly. I sort of grew up with all this stuff, you know. So going back to Belfast, when you were a little tiny tot, mm-hmm. was music all around you from the start? Yeah, well, the other... The, um... Uh, my my father used to go to a record shop. It was owned by a guy called Sully Lipsitz, and he was importing jazz records. And uh, my father used to go to that shop and buy. And he took me when I was very young there. So from when I was, uh can't remember, yeah. very young. It was called, believe it or not, Atlantic Records <laughs> before the other Atlantic wow. Records. And, uh, yeah, and so it was like a smoke-filled room and... Uh, you know, lots of jazz going on. And yeah. so that's my father was playing this stuff all the time at home, so I heard it. Were you singing from as long as you can remember? No, I wasn't singing from as long. My mother sang quite a bit in, the, you know, in parties and stuff like this, but I wasn't singing until I was a teenager. Yeah? Probably. Yeah. The first time you opened your mouth, that must have been a wonderful surprise <laughs> to have that voice come out. Was it there well, all the time? Well, I mean, long? you know, I had to develop it. When, mm. You know, you don't just start at the top. You, no. know, you have to, you you know, hopefully, you know, you use what you've got and then develop that. And yeah. then you've, you've hopefully evolved. I did evolve, you know, because so, I wanted to evolve as a singer. So, yeah. So I did. Yeah, definitely. Um, and and still uh, continue to do so. So the, the tracks that you've chosen, let's just have a, a chat about the first one, the Ken well, that, Yeah, well, this was one that my father used to play quite a bit. And it's, uh, you know, it was one of the first classic jazz recordings I ever heard. And it is a classic recording. And it's kicked off by Chris Chris Barber on trombone, kicks it off. Yeah. And Donigan, Donny, Lonnie Donigan's on banjo. We all know who Lonnie is. And, uh, you know, it's just a classic recording, the whole thing, and the vocal by Ken it is one of those recordings that it just has a unique stamp on it. It I does, think. and talking yeah. of stamping, what I love about the record, I think the eight tracks that were recorded on that album, you can hear the countings, all that stuff, all that yeah. real stuff. Yeah. You know, you know that everyone's there in the same room, all together in that moment. Yeah. You well, know, like it, all, old yeah. school, like it should be. Spontaneous, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean that's something that you know over the, the all the, a lot of the records that you you suggested and listened to. That's how things were done, wasn't it? You know they were all yeah. in the room, yeah. and the recording techniques. It was about the performance rather than the capture. It was about it? the performance, not the equipment. Then about the seventies, it became about the equipment and from the 70s on yeah and now it's even more so yeah the equipment yeah. but you're, you're a very in the moment kind of fella aren't you well, t- well to me that's what I thought that's what it was mm. I didn't you know I didn't think that w- I thought that was about you know just jazz rather than rock and it was uh, spontaneous and I still that's still my approach yeah you know even though I might be I might not I'm not singing jazz all the time but that's my that's how I approach singing yeah is, yeah you know well that's yeah. it I mean during the 70s when I suppose that whole people used to spend years in studios and you and it's such a uh, to me it's kind of you know well, it's like the Karl Marx thing turned on its head you know the means of production you know so they they whoever they are they on the means of production yeah or they think they do yeah and they're getting away with it so <laughs> you know we're letting them get away with it why I don't know I I, 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 <laughs> I get the... back to live recording but everybody's yeah. scared well, they shouldn't be, should no. they? I mean, I, I've had the pleasure of just out singing with you in a studio and it was so great to just walk in and you walked in and the red light went on and it was, that's how it should be. Well, know? that's how I learned. I mean, you know, I did, you know, I had to start somewhere and then I learned. And... Yeah. Let's talk about another of your records. This, it was, I was so chuffed you, you chose this. I know you're a big Woody Herman fan. Early yeah. Woody, really Well, this was, Woody. also, this was one of the first blues records I heard ever heard yeah also. Do, do you remember my father used to play so did you have do you remember it was on a on a record yeah it was that, a 78 blues upstairs blues downstairs, downstairs yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, the vocal version you chose so that's the yeah. blues upstairs but I love the I love the other side as well oh yeah yeah it's, uh, it's just but it's fun isn't it you know definitely yeah and yeah. humour in music is um, something that shines out of so much of your stuff good well I'm glad yeah glad real life was. 
So I got a chance then. <laughs> But even then, you might get some of your write some jokes from me. There we go. A new career. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But set down comedy. (laughs) (laughs) Even in the darkest of blues tracks, there's always a glimmer of humour there, isn't there? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, you see, they didn't necessarily need to have them in order to sing them. I mean, the blues. No. Well, John Lee Hooker was a deep, deep, deep blues singer, but I, I don't think he was that ever that depressed or unhappy. Yeah. Actually, yeah, it was quite the opposite. Yeah, but he could sing really deep blues, and you were convinced that, you know, I mean, this guy was going to slit his wrists, but he wasn't like that in real life at all. Yeah, and it was that kind of—it's the everydayness. I think that you can you can put yourself in their situation, even if you, like you say, you're not, you know, feeling terribly blue. But it's painting that backdrop, isn't it, so that you can express yourself within that. And a lot of your songs, you kind of, you paint a backdrop for everybody to put themselves into it yeah. and read into it what they want. Well, you have to, you know, you sort of act, act, act it out, you know. I mean, no song is real life, so basically it's you're acting it out. It's yeah. like psychodrama or something. And is that you something know? that, as a performer, you can you kind of do you psych yourself up before you go on or are you able to just you know go into that space uh, well I, I i go i go into it but sometimes i have to psych myself up mm. if i'm very tired yeah which i am most of the time now hello <laughs> you know i'm 71 so you know well yeah, yeah. don't look it at thank all. you so but you know yeah i just have to psych myself up you're right yeah yeah there's this book that I I love called Effortless Mastery, and I sent you a copy. Yeah, of it. that's right. Yeah. It's by Kenny Whelan. It's just about how that feels, you know, and 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 kind of opening yourself up so that when you're on, you know, you become the vessel to kind of tell the story, and and how that feels, you know. Yeah. Well, I used to believe that, I, and I bought it for a while, but I don't anymore. Really? No. No, I think it's all. It all comes from you. Yeah. It's all coming from you. That's kind of channeling concept was around for. A while. Am I am I behind the times? It's part then? of the new age. I need uh, to come out the other end of that then. I think so. And get back yeah. to reality. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> when you feel your feet on the ground, you know. <laughs> yeah. Then we know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a, another record that you chose. Incidentally, that I was looking at the early uh, Woody Herman stuff, and I found. Um, uh, the, the session before this happened in that session they did Woodchopper's Ball and Dallas Blues. They were like it was like a, a, a session of. Yeah, three hits all recorded in one oh, short yeah, session. Yeah, Amazing. Well, yeah, well, didn't it used to? It used to be. It should be four songs in three hours. Yeah. You well, know, one that, of them was rejected, was, but I think. But the, the but other. But that was were, normal. Yeah. That was normal. Yeah. And isn't that wonderful? Just so that yeah. that was everyday life. And yeah. That's how what can we get back did. to that? I don't know, but we're going to have to. <laughs> all the all different kinds of jazz that you love, different kinds of blues, and not many people are as knowledgeable about kind of vocalese as you it was a kind of quite a short-lived m- moment really wasn't it how did yeah, when, when did well, you well that's a, well i guess king pleasure yeah. i mean that was the Gold, golden days it was the the album was called golden days king pleasure and it was uh, moody's mood yeah and tomorrow's another day and uh new symphony said which i do yeah i do that you've done a version also. of moody's mood I did a version well. of moody's yeah. too with yeah with georgie fam yeah georgie did he did the middle yet yeah yeah and and this this uh, piece that you've chosen centerpiece yeah harry sweet edison and with lyrics by john hendrix yeah um, that's it well, i chose it because of you know lyrics well lyrics by john hendrix and also uh, annie russ is on it because one of my favorite groups back in the day was lambert hendrix and russ yeah yeah that well and that that beautiful and it was, close uh, harmony it's good to get to work with annie you know <sighs> Yeah. Did she just? Would, I mean, it's it's this integral three part harmony, really, really close harmony, very difficult to do, and the three of you, what a blend! You know, there's Georgie, there's yourself, and Annie. Was she a, a joy to work with? Did she just come in and do it? Yeah, just just come in and did it. Yeah. And that whole yeah. album recorded as live at Ronnie's. Is that right? No audience, but in no, the no, just recorded in the yeah, live in the room. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, our very own Guy Barker on that's the right. There. Yeah, Guy Barker and uh, Pee Wee's on Baritone and that one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. an awesome rhythm section. Yeah, and I tell you, I found out about it that I didn't know about Centerpiece. The original thing, did you know it was called Keister Parade? It was written by Johnny Mandel a few years yeah, earlier. Well, prior to then, John yeah. put words to it. Yeah, and yeah, then this fellow yeah. called Cy Tooth, he had a hit with it. No Do you kidding. know Cy Tooth? No, no, no I kidding, don't. No. <laughs> he was a bass so trumpet it was player. So pre-John pre Henry. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, it was Harry Sweet's Edison, I think, took 
I think a lot of the harmony that came from that original piece, he then used for oh, a centrepiece. Right. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. a fantastic song. And I mean, it, it, it feels great singing in with, with, with harmony, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I do it in the set quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that sense of collaboration is something that you've championed right from the start, haven't you? Well, I guess so, because starting with John Lee Hooker, I've done several duets with John in the 70s and evolved from there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think many performers these days, they're terrified of that kind of thing, whereas you've always been so open to it and, and kind of welcome that input, you know, of making music spontaneously together. Yeah, well, I like sort of like, you know, bouncing off other people and, you know, like yeah. sharing the vibe you know definitely kind of thing, you know? and that's the, the that's the wonderful and terrifying <clears throat> thing if i may say about working with you you never know what you're going to do I, I, yeah i know <laughs> i don't even know what i'm going to do some most of the time so um the, another track that you've chosen uh, this is a fellow that you introduced me to because i didn't know of his work and i'm talking about eddie clean head vincent oh yeah 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 so again was this an early influence one of the records yeah, you remember? Yeah, yeah, and, and I, 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 I met Clean Head a few times. And it was one, ex I mean, one experience. That was. What was he like? I, he was really fun. Well, they, I mean, we well, liked a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> first time I saw, first time I saw him live was in Montreux. It was 1974, and you know he he was doing his hits like um, Kidney Stew and Hold It, he was doing the hits, and then he came down. He sat on the edge of the stage with the alto. And he just started playing Laura. Wow. The ballad Laura. Yeah. And the musicians followed him. But it was just one of those kind of, wow, this, you know? Yeah. I mean, just to do that and uh, pull it off. I, the know? thing I love about is, again, it goes back to the humour of putting, um, and I, Kidney Stew Blues, do you, do you, did you have that record? Do you remember what was the flip side of that one? No, I didn't have the, I had the, um, I had the, uh, the albums. Oh, okay. I didn't have the. On the flip side of Kidney Stew Blues is Old Maid Boogie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. there, yeah, the, well, they were all they're similar, but there was Hold It Right There was another yeah. one. Hold yeah. It Right, yeah. Don't You Go Nowhere. Uh, I, saw him in, I saw him in Putney also in the uh, 70s. He played um, Half Moon. Yeah, Half I, oh, okay. Half I, don't, I don't know that one. Yeah, yeah. And he gave, me, he gave me some of his albums then that he'd recorded in England. He recorded a couple of albums in England then. Okay. Yeah. You were playing brilliantly, playing uh, a lot of saxophone and harmonica. When did you get your first saxophone? Was that the first instrument that you had, or was it a guitar? Or? Well, well, I started with the guitar doing uh, the Alan Lomax Foot Guitar book. It's called Alan Lomax Foot Guitar. Okay. And, uh, it's, a, it's called the Carter Family Style. So any anyone who... Uh, if you, you'll find that most people are coming from this same thing right uh the carter family style it, it runs through everything including lead belly also okay then I, I i got a saxophone when i was about 15 and then I, I took lessons and i was taking lessons i was i was actually playing i was just talking to somebody last week about i was actually playing stuff then i couldn't play now because i was reading i was reading then yeah and but um i stopped i didn't want to you know continue reading no, because yeah. you, you're in the moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what about the harmonica? Well, who was it? Was it Walter Page who, who switched you on to I that? No, little, little Walter kind of switched me on to uh, the various combinations of okay. uh, um, the, the way, you know, but I mean, I couldn't, couldn't get anywhere near where the way. I mean, he was a genius on the harmonica. There's nobody to, that's come anywhere near him. Did he play nobody. a chromatic harmonica? Yeah, or? he played chromatic also. Yeah. I mean, people are still trying to figure out even today, some of the tracks, what what keys, what har what harps he was actually using and what keys he was using, some of them they can't figure out at all. Wow! Because sometimes he would like be playing like a C harp and E, for instance, that kind of thing. Wow! Which is quite difficult. Yeah. But he could do it. He had his own kind of techniques that was really advanced. He yeah. was like the Charlie Parker of you know. Yes. Uh, my and you you met him. You. Yeah, I met him. I hung out with him. I went for Chinese food. For him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where was that? Uh, 1964. Amazing. Russell, Russell Square. Island, Island Hotel. The the other person I just wanted to ask about, I mean, there's so many incredible musicians that you've worked with, but Chet Baker, you, you reference him a lot in yeah, songs. Yeah, I met Chet as well. How did that come on. about then? Well, it was actually Elvis Costello. I was living in Notting Hill Gate, and Elvis Costello was living near me. And one Saturday morning, I bumped into him on the street, and he said... I'm doing this show, I'm doing this video thing at Ronnie's with Chet Baker. You want to come? I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? Why wouldn't I? Yeah. And, and you, when you worked together as well? 
Well, yeah. Well, on that on that uh, video, uh, just on that video that I did send, I picked the wrong song. Actually, <laughs> I regret picking that song <laughs> Which because didn't... the piano player didn't know it. Oh no! So no, he didn't, and so it was like um, I, I should have done something else. Really. Yeah. And what is it about sort of Chet's trumpet voice and voice that kind of reaches out? Oh, it's just so inspiring. I don't. I just, it's just that's you know that's something that you can't put your finger on. Yeah. That you just when you once you hear it, you go like, well, I mean that, and it's got a very meditative aspect to it. Yeah. Which really, when you see him live, you get that you know you get that much more, especially when he's playing this the ballads, the slow ballads. And there's never that. Like, there's never a wasted note, is there? No, no. He means everything that he's saying. Exactly. Exactly. I'll f- I'll finish because I know you've got a really busy day just by saying how wonderful this new record is that we we will be playing an awful lot of songs from it. Oh, that's brilliant! It, that's it's brilliant. fantastic, love. I th- honestly, Thank you. but I think the opening lines put another coin in the wishing well, tell everyone got to go to hell, and then yeah. let it rhyme. So we don't really know what you mean. It's all those things. It's kind of humour. It's it's defiance. It's kind of you know. I, I think it sums up the 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 record industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It does actually. <laughs> and going to Bangor, going down to Bangor. Yeah, well, that that was a, that's a tongue-in-cheek. One, oh, it's you know. so funny. Bring uh, me my bucket and spit. Yeah. But you shout it. That's <laughs> it's right. a demand. Well, it's that's kind of my Highland Hi- <laughs> Wolf, uh, yeah. you know, number. Yeah. It's going to do fantastically well. It's an already an absolute classic. Thank you so Thanks, much for Claire. coming Thank in. Thank you. Really no. enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you.